Joining me now to discuss the change to the currency is presidential historian Doug Weed. Doug, good to see you. Hi, thank you, Vlad. Great to see you. All right, let's first, oh, there's, a, there's a lot to go over here. Let's break it down. Let's talk first about Harriet Tubman. <laughs> she was a gutsy lady, and what's remarkable is she had to trust so many people. Uh, how could you do that? There were just hundreds of people involved. How she survived is miraculous. I also like the fact that, uh, according to historians, uh, she carried a pistol and a Bible. And that was, you know, how she, <laughs> that, that was the message, you know, that, you know, she protected herself because at one point the South put a $40,000 bounty on her head, and yet she continuously returned to the South uh, to help uh, those slaves find freedom. And you know, uh, just imagine the day when there's some big bank transaction and they go in a back room and they haul out all these $20 bills and they start counting them down and there's the, there's the picture of Harriet Tubman over and over and it's over. A, it's, she never could have imagined. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful picture. Uh, the idea that finally Andrew Jackson, uh, who some say was a, uh, some say was a white supremacist, um, clearly, people will agree that he did not believe in a central bank. He did not believe in paper money. The idea that Harriet Tubman finally, if you want to say, defeats Andrew Jackson is kind of interesting. <laughs> It's kind of interesting. And you know, uh, some people compare, uh, not for those reasons, but they compare Andrew Jackson with Donald Trump because he was anti-establishment. The first six presidents of the United States all came from the East Coast. He was from the West. Four of them were tobacco planters. Two of them had the same name, uh, John Adams and John Quincy Adams. They were the political aristocracy, and he was profane and wild and had a temper and actually carried bullets in his body. And as you pointed out, he opposed that uh, second central bank. They said his wife wasn't qualified to be first lady. So a lot of people have made that comparison, but historians uh, are, are uh, sour on Andrew Jackson right now because of his campaign against the Native Americans. He, he was very popular in his day. In fact, he was probably the first celebrity president, even beyond Washington. Huge crowds followed him everywhere he went. But history has a way of catching up. <laughs> and nothing is more clear than Harriet Tubman on the front and Jackson on the back. Doug, last question I want to ask you, it's about Alexander Hamilton. Now, obviously, <laughs> there's a lot of buzz because of the play. I'm convinced that uh, the Treasury Secretary and the Treasury didn't decide to keep Hamilton on the $10 bill because of a play. I'm convinced it's because he founded our first national National Bank. He was a writer of the Federalist Papers. He was a member of the Continental Congress, the U.S. Mint. I mean, this was one of our most respected founding fathers. <laughs> well, Vlad, you're the anchor, but I disagree. Really? <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't put Miranda on the $10 <laughs> bill. But this is an example to me of art over history. Really? Here's Lynn Manuel Miranda. How, do, how would they dare take Hamilton off now? <laughs> Doug Weed, good to see you as always. Thank you, Vlad.